One evening, Vakri was cruising along by the embankment, looking for a soft bench to rest his weary bones and to cogitate on the ways of life. The reason for that, and the reason why the boys begin to call him Rockabye, you will find out as the ballad goes on. Vakri hailed from Tobago, which part they have it to see, Robinson Crusoe used to hang out with Man Friday. Things was wrong in that island, and he made for England, and managed to get a work, and was just settling down, when bam, he get a letter from his aunt, saying that Tina want to come England too. Tina was Bucky's distant cousin, and they was good friends in Tobago. In fact, the other reason why Bucky hustled from the island is because it did look like he and Tina was heading for a little married thing, and Bucky run. Well, right away, he write auntie and say no, no, because he have a feeling this girl would make moderation if she come England. The aunt write back to say she didn't mean to say that Tina want to come England, but that Tina left Tobago for England already. <laughs> Bucky hold his head and bawl. On the evening the boat train come in at Waterloo, he went there and start abusing she right away, not waiting to ask how the folks at home was or anything. <laughs> what you doing in London? Barclay asked as soon as Tina stepped off the train. What you come here for, eh? Even though I write home to say things real hard. What happened? You buy the country already? Tina, she self given tit for tat right away. You rule in England now? The Queen abdicate? <laughs> You know where you're going, Bakri say. You know where you is. You know what you're going to do. I'm going straight to the colonial office, Tina say. What do you think the colonial office is, huh? You think they will do anything for you? You have a godfather working there? <laughs> well, they argue until in the end, Bakri find himself holding on to Tina's suitcase and they're on the way to the little bachi he had in Golders Green at the time. When they get there, Tina take one look at the room and sniff. But look at the state you have this room in. You ain't ashamed of yourself. Listen, Barclay say, you better don't let me and you have contention. I know this would have happened when you come. Tita, Tina starts squaring up the room, bris bris. It making cold, she say, putting chair this way and table that way and turning everything upside down for poor Barclay. How you just keep warm? Where this gas fire I hear so much about? Barclay grudgingly put a shilling in the meter and light the gas. And what you have to eat? But even as she asking, she gone in the cupboard and began pulling out rations that Barclay had stowed away to see him through the winter. <laughs> Barclay, as if he mesmerized, stand up there watching her as she start up a peas and rice on the gas ring. You better go easy with them rations, he say. I not working now, and money don't grow on tree here as in Tobago. When they was eating, Tina say, well, you have to get a job right away. He was always a lazy fellow. Keep quiet, Barclay say, enjoying the meal that Tina cooked in real West Indian fashion, the first good meal he ever had in London. You don't know nothing. First thing tomorrow morning, Tina say, what time you get up? About nine, ten, Barclay say vaguely. Well, it's six o'clock tomorrow morning, bright and early as the cock crow. You don't hear cock crowing in London, Barclay say. <laughs> Then he dropped the spoon he was eating with. Six o'clock. You must be mad. Six o'clock like midnight in the winter and people still song their sleep. Six o'clock, Tina say. Barclay finished eating and began to smoke, whistling a calypso softly as if he in another world and not aware of Tina at all. Ah, well, he say, stretching by the fire. That wasn't a bad meal. Look, I will give you some old blankets and you could wrap up that coat and use it as a pillow and you can sleep on the gong in that corner. Me on the floor? You're not ashamed? Well, it's only one bed here, as you see. I'm using the bed. Girl, this is winter, and if you think I'm going to sleep in the corner with two old blankets and wake up stiff. <laughs> but in the end, was Barclay who crouched up in the corner, and Tina sung to sleep in the bed. It looked to Barclay like he hardly shut his eyes before Tina was shaking him. Get up, Tina, say, six o'clock. Bucky start to curse. None of that, Tina say. No bad language when I'm around. Tina move around fast and give Bucky breakfast and make him dress and get out on the cold streets, mumbling, get a job, get a job, before he knew what was happening. It was only about 10 o'clock 
when he was washing dishes in a cafe where he get a work, that Bhakti realized what was happening to him. When he get home in the evening, Tina have screen put up around the bed and everything spick and span, and Bhakti don't know where to look even for chair to sit down. I see you make yourself at home, he say. And what do you think, Tina say? Well, girl, the boys has come here sometimes to play a little rummy. None of that now. And sometimes my girlfriend visit me. None of that now. So you taking over completely? Auntie say, I got to look after you. Why the hell you come England, eh? Well, a pattern begin to form as the weeks go by. But the main thing that have Bracky worried is the bed. Every night he curl up in a corner shivering, and by the time he doze off, six o'clock, get up, you have to go to work. Barkley ends sleep on bed for weeks. The thing like an obsession with him. He window shopping on the way home and looking at them bed and soft mattress and shoe and closing his eyes and sighing. Single divan, double divan, put you up, put you down. All makes and sizes he looking at. One night when frost was forming on the window pane, Buckley wake up and find he couldn't move. Tina, what? You sleeping? Yes. Tina, you want to get married? Married to who? To me. What for? So I could sleep in the bed. I mean, well, we use this to know one another good in Tobago. And now that you're here in London, what do you think? Well, all right, but you've got to change your ways. Yes, Tina. And no foolishness when we married. You come home straight from work. And I don't want you looking at no white girls. Yes, Tina. No sooner said than done. Barkley hustled Tina off to the registry office as soon as things was fixed, thinking only how nice the bed would be after the hard floor and the cold, with Tina to help keep him warm. What about honeymoon, Tina say after the ceremony? In the summer, Barkley say, let's go home. I am tired and I feel I could sleep for weeks. Bax, Tina say as they was coming away, I have a nice surprise for you. Guess who come into London this evening? <laughs> Father Christmas, Bakri say, yawning. No, Auntie. I write telling her to come up, as the room not so small, and we could manage until we get another place. And then she and me could get a work too, and that will help. You're putting help on Jackass back. Rocky Moon. But it was only when they reached home that a great fear come to Barkley. <laughs> he had was to sit down in a chair before he could talk. But Tina, he said quietly, we ain't have no place for Auntie to sleep. Don't worry, Tina say, she can sleep with me until we find another place. 